In this video, I'm going to be showing you the best live streaming software for churches in 2022. I'm also going to be showing you some of my favorite features, the different tiered plans, and some of the pros and cons of using this program, as well as how to set it up for the first time. Hey, it's Harley. Welcome back to the channel. I'm so glad that you're here. But let's get a few disclosures out of the way. First, this is a Mac only software. And from what I've read and gathered, they will not be venturing into the PC market. So make sure you are using a Mac if you want to use this software. Secondly, Ecamm is not paying me to record this video and upload it. They have no idea I'm doing this. This is my complete honest review of this software. So let's dive right in. First things first, you're gonna need to download the software. So we're gonna need to go to your web browser of choice and type in ecamm.com. From there, you'll be greeted with this home screen here and then we'll go up to the plans. And from here, we can see all of the different plans that they have. Now, the coolest thing is they have a free 14 day trial that has no credit card required. So you won't feel like you have to remember to cancel or anything like that if you aren't satisfied with it. However, I think you're gonna be very satisfied with the product. Now, the other th cool thing is it offers all of the standard and pro plan features. So let's go over the standard plan, which is probably one of the most common plans. So here you will find that it is $16 a month or billed at $192 annually. Now you get no watermark, you get unlimited streaming to all platforms. Um, one of my favorite features is using Restream. You get custom overlays screen sharing with picture in picture, automatic high quality recording, in-app comment stream, and a green screen feature. Now let's go over to the pro plan. So that is $32 a month, or if billed annually, it's 384. I think you save a little bit of money doing that. And then you get all of the standard plan features, as well as the live interview, a virtual cam, 4K streaming, widget overlays, live video monitoring to another display, an audio monitor output, which is very important because as we all know, audio is just as important, if not more important than the video itself. Automatic Facebook page cross posting, real time bandwidth stats and VIP tech support. So to get started, you're either gonna want to get started now pressing this button or press subscribe to the feature to the plan that you think you're gonna wanna use. Now at church, we do use the pro plan as it allows us to 4K stream, which we haven't ventured into yet. And the biggest feature is the audio output monitor. Now, once you do that, you'll press whichever one you want. So I'm just gonna press the free trial and it's gonna go into your downloads. From there, it will be a zip file. And then you can, once it loads, decompress it for you so then you just press ecamm live and it will open up ecamm for you all right so as you can see i have a second camera shut up here and it's already plugged into my computer and it just has a default scene now this isn't going to be as high quality because of the camera I'm using. I'm just going USB-C straight into the computer. I don't know if you can see that or not. No, you cannot. So now let's get into the general settings and get this set up to where everything on the back end is set up ready to go for you. So we'll go up here to the toolbar, go to the Ecamm Live, go to Preferences. From here, let's just go to General. I recommend keeping everything on here pretty much the same until you get going and see what features you want to add or take away. Next will be your account and that just tells you what plan you have, when it's going to be billed next, stuff like that. And then we'll go into the stream. So here you can select your stream size. Now I recommend not going anything below 1080p. Anything above 1080, just remember it's going to take more bandwidth so your computer might not be able to keep up depending on your wireless signal or if you're plugged directly in. To your network. Next is 16 by, or your aspect ratio. 
Um, here, I would probably just stick with the 16 by nine since it is going to be a video like this one you're seeing right now. Next is your frame rate. Now, I wouldn't go above uh, 30 because for one, it will require double the bandwidth and it doesn't have that natural motion blur like you're seeing in this video here. And then I would always use high quality video mode and high quality audio. You can set whatever format you want your video to be. MOV is what it comes default as. Now let's go into your video settings. Now here I would click everything but the show NDI titles full screen as I don't know how your NDIs are gonna be set up, but we can go into that a little bit later in this video, so stick around for that. And then lastly, this comes unchecked from by default, but I would always disable your built-in camera so you don't get this like awkward video of your production guy or gal in the booth and not knowing that it's not on the right camera. So that just saves a little bit of headache later on. Next is your audio settings. And then the most important thing is gonna be your mic delay. We all know audio is just as important as the video, if not more important. So make sure that you get your audio and video synced up. You can do that manually here with the slider or you can type in the amount that you know it is already. So just make sure everything is synced up from there. And the last most important thing is hopefully you're sending a stereo source to Ecamm so that everything is as high quality audio as you can. So just make sure that everything is mapped stereo. Now from here, the rest of these we don't use because we don't use this for like a Zoom or screen sharing or anything like that. We use Restream to go to Facebook and YouTube. So everything else is set up through that. So now, as you can see here, this is the program window. So if I had other camera options, which I can turn the built-in camera back on just for this example here. But now you'll see I have two different options for a camera. So all you have to do is press the plus or minus button to get rid of or add a camera. Now when you always, when it adds a camera, it'll always split screen it and then you would just get rid of it to go full screen. So now let's, let's get back to a higher quality video. There we go. So that's all you have to do to add or take away a camera. Next is you have scenes. So this can be really cool. You can do some cool effects with automatic camera switching and stuff like that. However, my favorite method of camera switching is using a Blackmagic ATEM Mini. Now this is a HDMI switcher and then it has USB-C out that will go plugged in right into the computer. Now from here, all your switching is done here, so you don't really need to worry about the scenes. Now let's get into the audio settings. So down here we have a sound levels tab. So here you just click the little drop down menu and you can click whatever source you want your audio to come from. From right here, I'm just using the built-in microphone, but hopefully you have like a USB cable that's plugged into the back of your soundboard and then plugged into your computer. So another really cool feature is you have some camera effects. So you would just come over here to the side where it would say show hide camera effects. And from here, you can edit your brightness. You can make it brighter, dimmer. You can adjust the color temperature, make it warmer, cooler. You can even add a little tent to it if you'd like, as well as you can select a custom LUT that you can load into Ecamm as well. And then you can mirror black and white, and then a couple other things, rotate it. Um, all kinds of really cool features inside of here. Now, say you wanted to show a video that is on your big screen in the service that is coming through ProPresenter. So what you would do is you would just add an NDI on the ProPresenter end. I would love to show you, but I just don't have ProPresenter on this computer because of the licensing stuff. You can only have it on one computer. Um, but anyway, so you would set up an NDI on there, and then from there, it would show up just like this 
has two uh, inputs, it would actually be a third one right here. It would just show Pro Presenter NDI, and then you would just click that. But what we do is we create a second scene to where one scene is just a full screen like media, which is the NDI from Pro Presenter. And then what we do is we have a second scene that just has our Blackmagic switcher. And then to switch between the two, we have a stream deck that can switch between full screen media and our video feed to where we're technically switching with two different devices. Um, but it seems to work so far. Um, I love having hardware and not only relying on software as well. But the nice thing is we could be doing all software based switching. And then from there, you would just add it just like you would a camera scene with the plus or minus button. So it's pretty simple. Um, the hardest part is just setting up the NDI on the Pro Presenter end. Um, if you would like to see a video about that in the future, please leave a comment down below. And if there's enough interest, I will make a video in the future. Now I've already gone over the pros of this software. Let's get into the two cons that I have really quick. First is you have to pay for it. Unlike OBS, this is a paid service. However, I truly believe that the features and the quality that you get with this user interface, it's very user friendly. And I feel like it has a lot of features that OBS makes it very complicated to use. And the tech service is incredible if you ever did have a problem. The other biggest feature that I love about Ecamm is it's actually not the software. There is a Facebook, a private Facebook group, all for Ecamm users. And there is a ton, a ton of content creators on there that are willing to answer questions with any problem that you might have. It even has Ecamm employees on there to help diagnose problems and stuff like that. And I found that very useful, especially when we started using this software back in 2020. With the pandemic, we had to start live streaming like everybody else. Now, the only other downside to this is it is a software app. So it is physically downloaded on your computer, so it takes up hard drive space, and it is going to take some of your computer's power. So if you don't have a very powerful computer, try it out. It might make your computer sluggish or slow while you're streaming, but that's really about it. Um, other than that, I really have no complaints about Ecamm. It has been fantastic for us to get the message out to as many people as possible. Now, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button down below, and I will catch you in the next one. Thanks.